Welcome, everyone. This is the prospectus, uh, prospective parents evening. I'm going to turn my video on. Um, what I'm going to do, a lot of parents can't, couldn't make uh, tonight. I'm actually trying for the first time uh, to record the video, and then I'll send a link through to the primary schools for that to be shared through their um, Connect page or however they communicate. So I'll run it, even though there's not many of us, I'll run the event as if we're going to, as if we'd have 150 here, um, and then that way we can get this communicated out to the, uh, to the schools. So my name is Jason Tomlinson, I'm the Associate Principal at Warwick Senior High School. Um, I'm mainly uh, in charge of lower school, years 7, 8 and 9. Um, and uh, Gemma Novotny, um, if you want to turn on your video, uh, Gemma is also with us. I'll let you, Gemma, introduce yourself. Oh, you're on mute there, I think. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. <laughs> Very good. So, hi, everyone. I'm Gemma Novotny, and I predominantly work with Year 11 and 12s as their year coordinator, and I'm uh, working with our Year 6s um, moving into Warwick Senior High School, transitioning for 2023. So, welcome. Thanks, Gemma. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I've got a presentation to, to go through. Um, so, what I will say is before the presentation, if you've got any questions, I'm going to share my screen now so you can see. Um, bear with me. Okay, so I've shared my screen now. If you've got any questions, there's a conversation um, box here. So feel free uh, to actually just write any questions in here. And then either throughout the meeting or certainly towards the end of the meeting, any questions that are in here, we can go through and answer. But hopefully the presentation does answer any questions that you might have. So uh, I'm going to go through the presentation with you all now. So welcome. As I said, this is the first time we've actually done uh, this over Microsoft Teams. Unfortunately, we couldn't invite people on site just with all the restrictions at the moment that we're having to implement through uh, COVID which is why I'm going to record this, just in case people are struggling to get onto uh, um, the link. But the perspective of our parents' evening. So this really, this evening is for anyone in year six who are looking to go into year seven, or um, even for those parents who are, their child might be in kindy and they're just wanting to understand what high school is about and which high school might be, um, uh, you know, the right one for them. So it really is for anyone from kindy right through to year six. What we're going to be doing is running a number of parent cafes where we're actually going to be coming onto the school grounds, provided that um, the primary schools are, are okay for us to come on school grounds with what's currently happening. Um, and they'll cap the number of parents that are coming and we'll actually go through with um, parents more in a, in a smaller kind of um, group situation and any further questions can be asked there but we want to really make sure that we are uh, speaking with the primary schools a lot um, just so parents are aware of, of what we offer at Warwick um, and if they have any questions uh, they can ask us. Firstly I'd like to uh, respectfully acknowledge the past and present traditional uh, traditional custodians of this land in which we're meeting the Wajuk people. It's a privilege to be stand, standing on Wajuk country. I also acknowledge the contributions of Aboriginal Australians and non-Aboriginal Australians to the education of all children and people in this country that we live in and share together in Australia. So why is Warwick the best choice for your child? I could go on and on and on about this, but what I've tried to do, just to not uh, rub it on too much, is I've tried to just put it in some dot points for you. So really, um, here we've got experienced, committed and caring teachers, and I'm sure every school will say that. Uh, what I'm going to really talk about here is we've got teachers who've been here for 40 odd years since the school was open, um, and we've also got teachers who've been here for three or four years. And I think what we've done is we've struck a real good blend of teachers who know the school and the context of, of our community really well, and then those newer teachers who are bringing all the new research from education in um, and that enthusiasm that you get from the new teachers as well. So we've really kind of got a good blend of experience uh, and new teachers here at Warwick. And I think that that really um, uh, does go well with what we're trying to um, achieve here at the school. 
We do, we are a small school. We're currently 775 students this year. We're growing, but we don't plan on growing more than 850, which means that uh, being a small school, that is small for a high school. Uh, we can cater to each individual student's needs. I've worked at a big school before, and what I can say is that big schools is harder, um, or it can be easier, sorry, for students to, I guess, uh, get lost in that system because it's uh, schools, when you reach over a thousand students, it can be uh, quite a daunting place and it can be easy for students to get lost in the system. Here at Warwick, we, we absolutely know our students really well. We feel that we've got an inclusive and positive culture um, and pastoral care really is the focus at Warwick. And you'll see that a little bit when Gemma uh, goes through her part of the presentation, just how much um, staffing and resourcing we put into our pastoral care side uh, at the school. We also offer a, low, uh, a large range of lower school courses, which I'll go through. We actually at Warwick, uh, for a small school, we invest heavily in our ATAR pathways. Um, our, we actually believe that for students to succeed, we don't want to just look at ATAR or VET. We actually want to invest in both areas. Um, with our ATAR pathways, the good thing about investing heavily there is it usually means our numbers in the classroom are so small, uh, so more individualised learning can happen in, within the classroom. Our VET pathway um, is also a very strong pathway that's helped students gain meaningful employment in the past uh, through things like mechanics or uh, chefs. Uh, that's been a really, um, a really good, uh, I, I guess, bonus for the school that we've linked really well with the workplace and with some other organisations. We have an academic extension programme. Um, we've got a, a number of specialist programmes here at the school. And uh, we've got some experienced teachers at the school. <clears throat> and also we've got a history of successful graduates at the school. So a number of our students have gone on to do um, some really great things and uh, they've got a lot of scholarships that have uh, come from the school. Um, so it really is a success story in that way. We have uh, multiple awards here at the school, which I'll go through as well. So there's a number of ways in which we believe that your child um, would be successful here and why we want your child to come to Warwick Senior High School. When looking at the awards over the years, our staff members at the school, um, these are state awards. So these are competing against every single 800 schools in the state. And we've uh, always been there or thereabouts. So in 2019, uh, AIO Jade won the um, Aboriginal Islander Education Officer of the Year. Uh, we've had a secondary school teacher of the year in Jeremy Caspers, who's now the head of D&T. And we've also had the uh, WA beginning teacher of the year. And we've also been nominated um, STEM School of the Year in 2018. So all of these awards just show the hard work really that the, um, uh, that the staff here do at the school and the benefits that the children get from that. Uh, I'm not going to read the testimonials, but I'm going to let parents have a little look through themselves. So as I said, we actually have a number of programmes. One of our programmes at the school is the Academic Extension Programme. Now you're not just limited to one programme when you come to our school. Depending on what programmes you choose, you could potentially be in multiple programmes. But our Academic Extension Programme, um, it just shows that we do value excellence and of um, uh, academic excellence at the school. We've got a specific programme that in maths, English, science and has students who meet the criteria and the criteria isn't just the top 25 percent of the students in that year group there are other um, criteria uh, within that as well because doing an ATAR pathway and that's what the academic extension program is about is to prepare students for the rigor of ATAR pathway in order to um, go through that rigor it's not just about your um, I guess your uh, scores it's also about your mindset and about your work um, and your ability to actually organise and work individually um, you know, through your two year studies in ATAR. So our academic extension programme really does aim to enrich and extend that curriculum for our students. 
Uh, it, as I said, prepares them for the rigors of ATAR from year 11 and 12. Uh, and um, when they do look at going on to selecting ATAR, as I said before, we have a wide, for a school of our size, we have a, a wide range of ATAR courses. And a lot of the time, those ATAR courses have very small students in because um, you know, we're a small school who invest in that area. Uh, last year, our top ATAR score was 95.2, um, and uh, the year before was 99.2. So we, you know, we have a lot of students who do achieve well. And at Warwick Senior High School, if you've got a child who's academically inclined, um, I can guarantee you that there is a pathway for them to achieve. For the academic extension program, to get into the program um, in year seven, um, there are tests that you do in year six. So initially it's all about the testing, but then when students are in that program in year seven, you don't just stay in that program until year 10, it's fluid. And every semester, depending on um, you know, uh, achievement results and efforts, and um, you know, there's a, a wide variety of uh, um, of how you can actually come in and out of that program, that's where we make our decisions every semester then in regards to which students uh, um, need the ability to go into that program uh, because they deserve that and which students unfortunately come out. But if a student comes out, it doesn't mean that they're out forever, they can go back in, it's just about meeting those criteria and teachers will work with students who are kind of uh, either nearly getting into that program or just on the cusp of coming out. So that's a good thing about the program, it is fluid, um, but also if a student is not in that program, it doesn't mean they cannot study ATAR subjects. We don't stream underneath the AEP program. Um, it's mixed classes and the uh, curriculum is available to every single student. So if, you're, if your child does succeed uh, and they're not in the AEP program, they can still have the potential of studying ATAR. So our vision here at the school, we really do want to create positive futures for our students and we do this in a number of ways, but I really want to go through um, the programs that we offer here, the opportunities that we offer for students in year seven and eight who do require extra support in literacy and numeracy. Uh, we actually have a, a specific literacy and numeracy option which we've invested in at the school uh, to actually do um, almost fill in those blanks um, that the students still are struggling to overcome from primary school in literacy and numeracy. The good thing about literacy and numeracy support uh, in year seven and eight it, is the classes do not impact in, in English and maths. They are a separate option subject where students will be able to have that added extra support. We follow a three tier model of, of intervention for literacy and numeracy at the school. Uh, in the parent cafes, I'm more than happy to go into more detail about them. Um, it will take a little bit of time, so I don't think it's uh, worth me going into too much detail now. However, when we have our final uh, parent perspective evening at the end of this uh, year for our year sixes coming into year sevens, we will also have our literacy and numeracy teachers presenting in those uh, presentations as well. We have a number of enrichment clubs. Uh, usually these clubs are run in the morning or the evening. Some are on the weekend as well, uh, around science, robotics, media, and visual arts, or audio visual, sorry. Uh, we have a wide range of excursions, incursions, and camps that we run at the school. Um, we actually run uh, excursions around um, our STEM program, which I'll go into in a little bit as well. Uh, we have a strong vet focus at the school, which I explained earlier with um, year 12 students in 2021, 100% of our students who selected the cert two or higher um, actually went through that as well and were successful. And I guess the mantra is no matter what the starting point is for your child, we will aim to create a positive future for them um, and positive future and a successful future for one child is going to be very different to another child because we all have different interests and that's where you know we believe that's with that small school that focus on pastoral care and everything that we invest here at the school that's why we believe that uh, no matter what the starting point we will have that potential and the opportunity for a, a successful outcome for your child so the programs we've got here at the school, we've got four main programs, specialist programs. So one of them is a football program. You might 
recognize that person on the screen. His name is Mark Hutchins. Um, he, uh, he used to play for the Eagles. Uh, he actually won the premiership with them in 2018. But he was a student at Warwick High School who was in the football program. Um, and uh, we've got a number of players who actually came through Warwick and went on to play uh, for the state or semi-professional or prof uh, professional. Uh, the program itself is one of only six schools in the state to have a Department of Education and um, WA Football Club endorsement. Uh, what happens is there's four hours of curriculum per week for, for your child. Uh, within that four hours, it includes content around strength and conditioning and sports science, specifically related to the football program. We have experienced and highly qualified coaches that work with um, those students. And if you do the academic pathways, the vet, uh, if you, sorry, let me say that again, if, if your child then wants to go and do VET or ATAR, um, it is ab absolutely up to them. You don't get locked into one pathway um, just because you're in the football program. So for example, Mark Hutchins there on the screen, I know for a fact that he, uh, he studied an ATAR pathway and he ended up getting a very high ATAR score, I believe of uh, 90 plus. Um, and we have students who study the football uh, program who actually go down the VET pathway and are successful there as well. So the, our football team does uh, compete locally, statewide, national and international. Obviously, the national and international has been difficult in the last few years because of the restrictions. But uh, that is uh, what, what our team usually does when the restrictions are. Um, are down and also um, they're very successful uh, because we can recruit from outside of the catchment area we do tend to have a very good uh, um, group of players who can compete at high level as i said we've got a history of creating of producing sorry successful athletes and we have very strong links with the waffle clubs and the academies as most of our players do play for them now our netball program very similar to the football program in that they are only one of four schools who are a tier one endorsed netball program. Again, they have four hours of curriculum per week like the football program, but theirs is tailored towards the netball context. Um, and again, we have highly experienced coaches that work with our students. The pathways are like uh, are through VET or ATAR and they too um, compete statewide, nationally and internationally. We do have uh, strong links with the WA Netball, um, uh, with WA Netball and with local clubs as well. It's so very similar to the football. Um, it, you know, it's a very successful program and thankfully we can recruit outside of the catchment area for that. We've got two other programs here at the school and these programs are growing more and more. The dance program, um, interestingly, is uh, a very exciting program. Uh, historically, we've had a lot of students in the program. However, because of the um, how competitive the program is becoming, and because it's such a, an enjoyable program for students to select, we're actually getting a new performing arts theatre built on the school grounds. It's a multi-million dollar uh, building that the government is building for us, and it's going to become the uh, centerpiece, if you like, uh, of when the students are doing a lot of their performances. The performing, uh, the dance program really is uh, linked in with a curriculum for dance. Um, it, the students study it twice per week and uh, they actually go through some of the dances uh, such as classical, contemporary um, styles of dance. They look at the history of dance and uh, dance appreciation. Now, as there's so many different uh, varieties of dance, we do have our dance teacher, Ms. Nolan, but we also have specific dance instructors that come in um, who might be uh, more experienced in uh, some other types of dance that our dance teacher um, uh, doesn't have that in-depth experience with. That's where we get those specialist instructors to come in to ensure that the students are getting the top quality education that they deserve. The Current pathways uh, for dance are years 7 to 12. You can select it in senior school uh, and they do actually do competitions and performances. We do one dance fest uh, performance, which is the biggest uh, evening of the year. Um, it's fantastic. At the moment, that's been hosted off school site. 
Um, when we get the Performing Arts Theatre, depending on the capacity of that theatre, we may decide to hold it there or we may still go off-site, but it's absolutely fantastic to see the students and uh, the, the dance routines that they've got. There is a criteria to be in the programme, but I do ask if your child is interested in dance, even if they're not that experienced, that um, they do uh, come and inquire and, uh, and try out for it. Um, it is for both females and males, and I just ask that, um, yeah, uh, come, and, come and have a little look at it. It is a really good program. And finally, we've got our Musical E program. You may have seen as parents uh, the Musical E program at the uh, school. We actually had students go to the primary schools and actually do some performances there. So you may have seen them last year or the year before. The music program focuses on um, really what's in the, the music curriculum and it has a contemporary focus where our students um, they get assessed as part of the year seven curriculum uh, but luckily the students who are in the music program also have a special IMS instructor an IMS instructor is a department of education teacher who specializes in specific areas of music so if your child for example comes into the program and is a flute specialist um, our teacher in the, in the uh, music program specializes in uh, vocals and guitar, so he wouldn't uh, take on the specific flute lessons, but the IMS teacher, who is a Department of Education teacher, comes in and teaches that child for 20 minutes a week a flute lesson. And so each child who is in the, the music program will have the opportunity to be linked in with an IMS teacher. So they've got their normal dance classes, that, uh, music classes that they do, and then they have that supplementary IMS class as well. And it all happens within school time. Uh, we do have extracurricular music sessions. So usually in the morning before school uh, or after school is when we have our music practice. And this is when the students will start to practice for their performances that they might do at the primary schools, for example. So we do have a STEAM program as well. Uh, now, when I say STEAM program, um, I really need to clarify that because uh, STEAM, uh, I said to, to you that we won a, an award. The, uh, we've won many STEAM awards in 2017, 2018. We won a number of STEM awards through the Department of Education. Essentially, we were the STEM School of the Year. In, uh, and we beat 800 and odd schools to that award. We're very proud of that. But one reason why I believe that we are um, uh, so good um, within that STEM slash STEAM area is because we don't actually have a specific program where 30 students per year group would be focusing and studying within that area. We actually um, incorporate STEAM amongst the whole school. So uh, this slide here shows that um, on the right hand side is our instructional model, uh, uh, instructional model. That's our pedagogy at Warwick Senior High School. So that's what our teachers incorporate within every single lesson that they teach. Um, and as you can see on the bottom right of the circle, um, our STEAM skills, our collaboration, communication, problem solving, creative thinking and analytical thinking, that's what we really focus on within our classes. So STEAM is taught everywhere. Um, within the school and as part of our recognition for um, STEAM, we're actually getting a STEAM building built on school site, which should be built by at some point next year. And that will be available for every single learning area to go and further explore uh, STEAM skills and what that looks like within the curriculum. Um, you know, as I said, it's taught in every single classroom, not just to a select few students. Um, some things that we've done in the past, we actually have a, uh, um, uh, when phones were allowed uh, at school, we, um, we actually built a, for the students, should I say, built a solar uh, phone charger um, amongst the, the yard where students could plug their phones in. Obviously, we have the phone policy now where students aren't to use phones during the school time. But those are just some of the things that we, that we have done. Um, the pedal pre you would have saw in the video at the beginning, the pedal pre uh, is something else that our students have done uh, within that STEAM area to build their own pedal pre cars so they can go and uh, perform and compete in competitions. 
And STEAM is something that is uh, taught in both ATAR and VET pathways. It's across the school. So I'm now going to um, hand over to Gemma Navani. Um, she is going to be talking about student expectations and student services. I'll turn my camera off. Uh, you, you got me there, Gemma? I do, Jason. Thank you. OK, you just let me know if you want me to turn the, uh, the presentation. No worries. If you can pop the PowerPoint on now, lovely. Can you also give me a thumbs up, Jason, if you can hear me, just to double check? Perfect. Thank you. OK, so I wanted to chat to you about the expectations of our students. Jason, I'll get you to swap slides. Thank you. So at Warwick Senior High School, we are a PBS school. So we do believe in forming and maintaining positive relationships between student staff and our local community. PBS is a positive behaviour school, that's what it stands for. And at Warwick, PBS aims to develop a consistent whole school approach with our students. We like to use a common language with them in regards to the positive behaviour expectations. So in our classroom and outside of our classrooms, our teachers aim to respond to behaviour errors from our students with a reteaching focus. So some of the outcomes for our PBS are that our students know what to do. They know how to demonstrate the correct expected behaviours and they have the skills to do that because we teach them. They also see that natural benefit for acting responsibly within the classroom and outside of the classroom. So with all that in mind, then it allows our teachers and students to have more time to focus on relationships and classroom instruction. Thanks, Jason. So our common language that we use with our students is bees, and that was on the previous slide. It's found in all the classrooms around the school. So if you've ever been on our school site and when you are in the future, you'll see that around the school. We like to keep it nice and simple. So B for us stands for believe. We want our students to believe in themselves, but we need to teach them what believe looks like. And we want to acknowledge when they're demonstrating that. So our students, we want them to believe, we encourage them to believe. That might be aspiring to achieve, being the best that they can be, helping others, setting goals, problem solving, participating. So we say to students, you know, believe in yourself. We want them to know and to be able to recognise when they are believing themselves and what that is actually looking like. Thank you, Jason. So E stands for engage. We often say to our students, are you engaging in your classes? Are you engaging positively in, in our school community? Examples that we would demonstrate to our students and to teach our students and what it might look like is encouraging others, being honest, accepting differences, engaging fully in their work and being cooperative around the school community. We want them to make mistakes and we want them to learn from that as well. We want them to take responsibility for their actions. So again, it's about teaching them and allowing them opportunities to recognise when they are engaging and what does engaging look like for them? It may look different for them than it does for others, perhaps. Thanks, Jason. So the second E is equip. So this is a focus for us for 2022 for term one. So we want students to be equipped, ready to learn in their classrooms and outside of the class, ready for school each day. And that could look like meeting deadlines or arriving on time, being punctual. We promote high attendance in our students, being on time for classes, bringing a positive mindset, seeking valuable resources. So all of these uh, values we are promoting with our students and again teaching them what does equip look like for them. How do they know that they are equipping themselves? Thanks, Jason. And the last, and we hear this so much, don't we, about our students being respectful, respectful members of our school environment, our school community, and the, the wider community as well. So what does our students, what are they demonstrating when they're being respectful? Again, we teach them and we encourage and we promote that students possibly are being kind to others. They're looking after others' property. They're listening, following the teacher's instructions. They're using good manners. They're using appropriate language and they're looking after their school property. Personal passwords too is an important one because a lot of our students these days are on their 
um, programs at school and, and computers and laptops. So how are they showing respect? We'll remind them and encourage them to, to demonstrate this often. Thank you, Jason. So this is a huge focus for us. The three R's, again, we hear about it all the time, don't we? Relationships, relationships, relationships. It's a tongue twister, that one. I had to say that nice and slow. But it's a massive focus for us. We aim to build and maintain relationships with our students and our families. Thank you, Jason. So student services, we have a large team of 12 professionals that really help create that wraparound support for our students to access in their school journey throughout high school. So student services, I feel sometimes is a little bit like those first responders, but we also aim for preventative strategies with our students and education, educative strategies as well. And again, that PBS reteaching our students when uh, they are perhaps demonstrating um, a behaviour error or the in, in, inappropriate behaviour. It's about that reteaching. So the staff we have in student services are listed there, obviously, but we're very lucky to have so many. We have a head of student services, a student support coordinator with a really heavy focus on that PBS, that positive behaviour support. We have three year coordinators and the aim is for those coordinators to move through the years with those students to really again create that wraparound support and to get to know their students and again to build the three R's, the relationships, relationships, relationships. We're very lucky to have a chaplain and a school psychologist, a community health nurse as well as a first aid officer. We have an Aboriginal and Islander education officer, so AIEO who's actually an ex-student of Warwick Senior High School, so we're very, very lucky to have him on board. We also have a learning support coordinator and education assistant, so a really, really um, big team um, with a lot of depth of, of knowledge and um, experience there. Thank you, Jason. So we wanted to talk a little bit about bullying tonight. We know that it's the number one concern for parents when surveyed and students uh, across all WA schools uh, when entering year six, uh, sorry, year seven from year six, transitioning from primary school. What we do know is that bullying does exist, unfortunately, but what we need to be mindful of is that difference between bullying and that natural development in social behaviour in our students and your children, um, particularly in year seven and eight. So we need to uh, educate our students and our communities and families too that it is that ongoing deliberate misuse of power in a relationship through repeated verbal, physical and or social behaviour that intends to cause physical, social and or psychological harm. Our number one message to families and to our students is that if we don't know, then we can't support. So we want to intervene nice and early to minimise any social issues that could escalate into bullying and reteach our students those expected behaviours again. So our students need to feel comfortable coming forward to student services, particularly or to a, a teacher or a peer or to their families. Rarely does bullying uh, continue or escalate when they do come forward for some support and some help. So our advice again to you is to continue to communicate with us for us to support your child if you do feel that bullying is a concern. Thank you, Jason. So talking about communication and how important it is, we do have different methods of communication. Some of you may be aware of the Department of Education Connect system. So we do use Connect. A lot of information goes on there, particularly around your child's curriculum and their programs, assessment timetables and schedules and things like that. We have emails, obviously phones, SMSs. We have letters also. Our school website is excellent, so I encourage you all to have a look there. We have Facebook, so please join our Facebook community. We have a lot of uh, interesting events throughout the year that we do pop on Facebook. We also have our school newsletter and our latest uh, platform that we uh, commenced last year was Compass. It's a really great app to use to download. It's that real one stop shop for all the information that you would need regarding your child attending their class. Were they late? Are they present? Are they absent? Did they attend the health centre that day? Um, are there messages that the teacher is sending you that it would come through on Compass? daily notices, and it's a really great platform too to join up 
to events for the school. So working with year 11 and 12s, our event for future um, events for them is on Compass that you can click on read, permission notes, etc. Click that you're attending and you can pay all in the one area. So it's a really great one stop shop for um, communicating and receiving communication from us. So um, next year we do encourage you to jump on board Compass and you'll obviously get login details for that. Thanks, Jason. So year six transitions an exciting space for us all and we're really looking forward to that this year. So all enrolled year six students are invited to attend our transition days. It's a whole day fun filled activities at time tabled in classes uh, doing lots of different um, type games and, um, and in different learning areas. And so the aim is for year six is to engage in some um, classes and whilst getting comfortable in that secondary school setting and meeting new buddies along the way as well. So this year it may look a little bit different. We're not quite sure yet with the current climate and restrictions, so we are waiting a little bit, um, but we are really hoping to proceed as normal and there will be more information about that coming soon. So watch this space for transition day. Thank you, Jason. So Buzz Day is a day for our year fives. Um, I'm going to ask Jason to play the video first and then I'll comment after. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for that, Jason. So yeah, Buzz Day is coming soon. I believe it's in term three, really looking forward to uh, that day. And again, more information will come out about that in due course. So how do we prepare our students for the move to secondary school and how, uh, what are the events that we hold at our school to help them transition? So in the past, uh, we've had some science visits and again, things this, this year are looking a little bit different and we're having to work around that. So we do hold science visits in the school, allowing students on site to really get engaged in that science space. We have primary school visits, 
transition excursions, which we've just showed you obviously as well, orientation days, which we call um, transition days. Uh, we had that student services support, again, that um, staff, the 12 of us working with our students, that wraparound support, particularly when they're transitioning to secondary school. We do ident identify with the primary schools um, students that might need a little bit of extra help settling in and whether that's through the parents or the schools. Um, parents are, are more than welcome to call us directly if they do feel that their child is needing some extra support. We also develop individual education plans and again, I'm happy to communicate with um, any members of our community if their child is needing some extra support and what that might look like moving forward. Thanks, Jason. So supporting our year sevens, we are really lucky in our school grounds, beautiful grounds to have a large area for our year sevens, the year seven zone or year seven quad. Um, it's a lovely space really allows them an opportunity just to get to know each other um, in one side of the school and have their own place to be. So somewhere um, where they can be centralised and, um, and sort of know where to go each break time rather than sort of getting a little bit lost around the school. They know that each break time they can head to their year seven zone. So we have interactive lunchtime activities for all year groups really, but particularly year sevens. We've got basketball court and the ping pong tables in their area. And we also have the year coordinators to engaging activities with them, which might be our um, four square and, and some fun activities during break times. Again, we have the student services support with that wraparound support for our students. And we really, really do promote and encourage that open and honest communication with all our families and community members. Thanks. So enrolments are now open. So I personally did deliver the enrolment packs round to the local primary schools a week ago, which is a nice thing to do and get to know the local primary schools. Uh, we are asking those enrolment packs to be returned as soon as possible. The program trials are in June, so we do need enrolment packs filled out, completely filled out and processed so that students are invited to attend those trials. So any incomplete applications we're unable to accept. So again, any questions you might have or any support you might need, please don't hesitate to give us a call.